All right, so my name is Andrea Nikolai and I work for the University of Florida Extension. And thank you so much for coming today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. So we're doing our last foodie fun at home holiday styles and this one's the apps and mocktails, okay? So get going here, make sure I can work. Okay, that's me. Um, so I'm a registered dietitian, and then again, I work in Polk County as a family and consumer sciences agent. So um, if you haven't used Zoom very much, just um, you, here's kind of the overview at the bottom or at the top. You can hover over the top of your screen if you don't see the options, and then there's a chat box that you'll find in the more, and that's where you can type a lot of comments and things like that. And what I'm going to do here is I just um, muted everybody for right now. And just if you'd like to unmute yourself at the end, that is definitely okay. Sorry, having a little problems clicking here. Okay, and then I just have the short evaluation following the webinar. And I really appreciate your feedback on that. And I have to tell you guys, Thank you to all who donated to the program just to like, um, and then you will get that infographic that turned out really well, but just I really appreciate everybody's support and thank you for listening. Um, that's support number one. So the three big things today, so we have a half an hour, right? Or a little bit less now, but the three big things I want you to take away, easy and delicious apps for your celebration. We're gonna break down the board, you know, so you might've heard of the cheese board, or charcuterie board or whatever um, you'd like to call it. So we're gonna show you how you can do a healthy and easy one and then appetizers to love and then holiday drinks that will work for all ages. So you might not be going to as many parties per se where it's just adults or things like that, but maybe just celebrating with your family. And these things will work, you know, the holidays and beyond, okay? So even New Year's, thank you, but beyond that. So just a reminder then, remembering the goal. So we want to have half of our plate fruits and vegetables. So like even when we're talking about the cheese board then, you know, trying to fill half of it with fruits and vegetables and then um, about a fourth of it with whole grains and then a fourth of it with that lean protein, that's where you wanna be. Um, and that will help you and your guests um, be as healthy as possible and stay well, okay? So, um, overview on that. Um, just kind of what I said then, and um, just remembering that we tend to fall short on the fruits and vegetables, so they're really great appetizer options. So first, breaking down the board. So we're going to start with the board because all the things that we're going to talk about for the board then, they can be great standalone appetizers too. And so I realized just doing this presentation, you know, I was working on it, um, this week and then last night, and there are a thousand ideas for great appetizers and great ideas for the board, but I'm just gonna try to break it down and keep it simple for you guys. So first of all, like a charcuterie board, you might've heard of that, right? So charcuterie, the definition is actually cooked, processed or cured cold meats and meat products. So it's typically like the pork products, sausage, pâtés, hams and stuff, and it's a French word, okay? And so charcuterie board, you know, it most often, most often consists of meats and cheeses. So it's the same thing basically as a cheese board, essentially. But what we've kind of done just in the last kind of, it's exploded as a trend. And so now there are lots of things you can put on a cheese board and it's really, um, can be a really great meal in itself or just healthy options for everybody that do enjoy. And it's served cold. So that's an advantage because you can prepare everything almost ahead, right? And it doesn't have to be a board. You know, you see the board on the left, but um, I've seen it done with plates and platters. And so the idea would be that aim for the color and the eye appeal and fruits and vegetables give us that. So that's why we got those working to our advantage, double advantage, okay? so. First of all, just the first thing first, we love to dip, right? So this is a lot of dips, but these are all healthier options. So you could put that rich, creamy, 
you know, dip on there that has a thousand calories, but these are all delicious and great options also. So anywhere from the hummus to guacamole to ziki sauce. So that's basically just plain Greek yogurt. And then you combine some cucumbers with that. You can shred them and sometimes garlic, salt, pepper, a little bit of olive oil if you'd like, but a lot of times it's used as, um, it's great with any sort of meats, right? And then also whole wheat pita and with vegetables and then salsa or fruit salsa. And then there's pear butter. All you need is like basically ripe pears and a little bit of water and you heat that up um, until it kind of condenses down. And then you have this delicious pear dip, okay? So pumpkin and vanilla yogurt, great and seasonal. And then there's the vanilla yogurt and peanut butter. So if anybody works with the expanded food and nutrition education program with UF, I know this one, um, one of the ladies who used to work with me, it was a hit, you know, people love those two together. So you have to try that one. Great fruit dip and then ricotta. So you can get that part skim ricotta and then plus orange um, zest or orange, just even essence and then um, a honey almond dip. And then just thinking about your favorites, right? So you're like, well, what about the cheesy stuff? Oh, we'll talk about that. But um, how about hot spinach dip, right? So you could use Greek yogurt or cod cheese. Um, I do that recipe a lot just with, um, when I'm traveling around just doing food demos, it's just you take cottage cheese, right? With mozzarella, canned artichokes and some frozen or canned spinach drained and then garlic and you heat that up and it's um, it's really good. And the protein, you know, there's protein in cottage cheese where and Greek yogurt, where it's not in the sour cream or cream cheese. So you're getting, you know, you're having, you're feeling a little bit extra satisfied and so will your guests too. So veggies definitely on the board with this, you guys. <laughs> Unintended, but um, just really trying then to include as many different colors as you can. Um, everywhere from just thinking about what's on the veggie trays when you go to a grocery store. And then all those hold up really well, but then beyond that, and you really, there's no limit to what you can put on there. The best thing I would say is just to go to the store, even without a list of what you kind of want, and just look at what looks good to you and looks fresh, because that's what's gonna look best on the board and just be the most nutritious also. And asparagus, it's a, I've seen it on there a lot, but you can blanch it or if they're thin spears, then you can just put them on right with themselves. So the next one here, fruits, definitely on board also. So make sure they're, they're your other big color source. So I love things like grapes and blueberries because all you have to do is rinse them off, right? And you can throw them on the board. And so things like apples are great too, and especially in season, but they do brown, right? But you can dip them in anything with vitamin C. So that would be any of your juices, like grapefruit or orange juice, or you can just, there's actually apples that just tend to slow browner, or tend to brown slower than other apples. So I have some of those listed there. Persimmons really in season, pineapple, pears, figs, if you can get those, pomegranate seeds, um, great idea, and then dried fruit too. So, you know, definitely don't have to worry about that and you don't have to do anything with that ahead. And just that's, um, would have concentrated calories, right? So if you're looking at a cheese board, I would want you to choose mostly the fresh when you can. And melons, they're really great. And you might've seen those at a lot of weddings and things like that. That's because you can do a lot at a low cost. So those are really good, um, great for your wallet, basically. And then pickled, right? So pickled and fermented have become bigger things, but they can have some bacteria benefits for our gut. And so just things like olives, which have those healthy fats, you can do like pickled okra, mushrooms, artichoke heart, dill, pickles, and then also grilled or roasted vegetables. So those are great options also. So I have a bunch listed there, just anywhere from eggplant to baby tomatoes. Um, they can be awesome. And the nice thing is they're served cold, right? So we can make them ahead, whereas normally you'd want to serve those maybe warm. And then protein. So a lot of times you see like things like salami or um, 
I guess, you know, even bologna or those types of more cured meats. And so I want, I want you to try to get away from those when you can, okay? So choosing mostly things like that I have listed here. So anywhere from nuts, great protein, right? Um, cheese, there are lower um, calorie cheeses. Mozzarella is naturally lower in fat and same with feta. And then also when you're choosing cheeses, because cheese is a common one on a board, but just thinking about choosing the sharp one versus the mild one because it's more satisfying and it has, you know, just the more flavor you need less, right? And so that's why a lot of recipes throw in a little bit of Parmesan cheese because Parmesan has a ton burst of flavor, um, whereas you might have to add a ton more of another cheese to get that much flavor. So just thinking about um, what you're going to choose, so like sharp cheddar versus mild, I think I said that. And then sliced turkey or ham rolls. So doing that instead of the other meats. And then cocktail shrimp, lean, almost fat free, you know, unless you add something to it. Protein, really great for you. And then getting that seafood, hard boiled egg halves. So complete protein there, edamame. So that's soybeans. And then roasted chickpeas, or you can do roasted fava beans. I think you can find, you can find packages of this in the store if you don't wanna do them yourself and then chicken or tempeh skewers. And so if you don't know what tempeh is, it's made from soybeans and then um, it's basically packed together. So it's firmer and you can add flavor. It's often with flavorings and I have a picture of it coming up. So <laughs> keeping going here. So just some different ideas then thinking about whole grains, right? So a lot of times we see those white crackers or white pieces of bread. So you want to try to choose the whole grain options because that makes you feel more satisfied and it helps prevent diabetes, high blood pressure, um, helps you manage weight, and then just has a lot more nutritious B vitamins, things that you need to stay healthy, okay? So you can bake your own tortilla chips. All you do is take like a whole wheat or a corn tortilla, do like a cookie cutter and make them into chips, and then you can season that with a dash of lime and salt when it comes out. Um, but even things like popcorn, I've seen those in bowls on the cheese board and just trying it, um, trying to flavor it different ways that people might enjoy. I did that as a gift one time, just gave it to different coworkers with different seasonings and people seem to really like it. If you haven't heard of nutritional yeast, it's kind of like um, nature's Cheeto dust, they call it. It's a deactivated yeast, but it's um, vegetarian and then it also has a lot of times it's fortified with B12 vitamin. So it's a great um, cheese-free healthy option. So that's a, another one to try. You can pick that up at the store near you. <laughs> so just other ideas too, that would be great, you know, stuffed mushrooms. So we're thinking of stuffed stuff here. So stuffed tomatoes, stuffed mushrooms. Um, I have a, a colleague who just takes those mushrooms. She chops off the stem, right? You know, flips them upside down. So you chop the stem and then she adds a little bit of Italian breadcrumbs and then um, stuffs the mushrooms with it, bakes it and tops it with Parmesan cheese, which would be that burst of flavor then. And so that would be one great way to get some more vegetables. Stuffed dates, you can do that. I've seen it multiple ways. You can just take the date and you can bake it or you can not bake it. Um, just stuff it with a nut and then stuffed jalapenos. So I actually did um, some testing for the avocado board for their recipe contest. And one of the recipes that I had to test or got to test were um, the avocado stuffed jalapenos. So what they did is um, they're traditionally, I would say jalapenos usually stuffed with sausage and a lot of cheese, which not best for you. So replacing that then they replaced it with avocado and some sharp cheddar. And so you mix that up then and baked it and they were pretty good, you guys. And so some of you don't like spicy things and that's definitely okay. But you, what we did is you take out the seeds and that um, pith or the white um, pith in the middle and that's where the spicy things are. So they're not, they're not spicy and that would be another vegetable, so. Okay, so just kind of another last thing then, you know, going with the theme Sometimes you might be overwhelmed, you know, there are so many options um, or there are just great options. And so you might not be overwhelmed at all, but you could do like, maybe you could do two boards. 
You could do an Asian theme, then you could do a Mediterranean theme. I've also seen dessert boards. So you could do like, you know, the strawberries and maybe some dark chocolate dip, right? Um, some whole grain crackers and just some other fruits and things like that. But just taking um, these ideas then, these are all just some healthier ideas to make your board. So what I want you to do then ideally is you're going from this, like the one on the left, <laughs> um, to the one on the right. So we definitely want more color, um, some leaner proteins and um, yeah, fruits and vegetables when you can. So less pepperoni, summer sausage. And you know how sometimes you might see like bacon wrapped asparagus or something like that. So what I would like you to do is switch to like prosciutto or turkey wrapped asparagus and then more shrimp, turkey, lean ham, roast beef, if you're gonna put the meats on there and more whole grains. So that would be looking at those crackers then and making sure in the first ingredient, it's the word whole, okay? So that's what we're aiming for and more colorful fruits and vegetables. And then thinking about the plate, you know how we were talking about aiming for half fruits and vegetables on that plate? So think about that, you know, on your cheese board that could help you too. You know, like, what do I put on this thing? And so just thinking, well, I'll choose some fruits and vegetables, you know, some maybe some dip like some hummus um, and then just putting some lean protein on there like they did here. They have cheese balls and some hard boiled eggs and turkey and nuts. So that'd be a great, great thing. And prosciutto, for those of you who don't know, it's just, it's a ham, it's a cured ham instead of the, the bacon. So leaner option, that's what it is. Oops, I guess we can go back. I don't know, <laughs> having clicking problems. So here's just an example of a board and they do really well with, they have a lot of, they have fruits and different vegetables, right? Um, they have some hummus on there. I would probably, you know, just switch out to some leaner proteins and maybe some whole grains um, for this one. And that would be another great board. And then we have beyond the board. So you might think, okay, so, I got the board, I don't wanna do a board or um, things like that. And you know, all those things we just talked about, they're great standalone and just bowls too, okay? So these are all good things. And so what I have pictured there, if you guys don't know what that tempeh looks like, that's what it is. It's like, the, um, it's fermented soybeans then and it's usually flavored. So you can get that in a store too. That would be a vegetarian option. Good for you, beans too, right? And so here are some different appetizers then. So we have the mini vegetable quiche. So that would be one. You can do like potato boats, you know, they're filled with spinach then and cheese versus just cheese and bacon, right? So you're getting some vegetables in there. The kebabs or skewers. Um, you could do like a Greek salad kebab as a theme. You can do the feta, cucumber, cherry tomatoes, olives, and then sheet pan nachos. I think we talked about this in the last one but they're really fun. And you just put um, either cauliflower or zucchini uh, roasted that's as the base. And then you top it with things, you know, whatever you'd put on your normal taco seasoning toppings. So it'd be a good option. Then we have the endive leaves with goat cheese and walnuts. I used to work with a catering company and I have done so many of those. <laughs> and so what you did is you take that um, endive, leaf, endive leaf so you might, you see it in that picture right there. It's from Better Homes and Gardens magazine, but they had endive leaves and you can use them with dip because they kind of hold up a little bit better. But what we did with the catering then is we just put this really small amount of goat cheese right at the end of them and put a walnut, toasted walnut on there. Um, so that would be an option, right? You're getting some vegetables and people love them. So we did that almost every wedding that I did. And then sweet potato toast, so you're cutting it the long way. And then when, they, when they're done roasting, you can drizzle it with almond butter and then a teaspoon of maybe some dried coconut chips. That would look really pretty. Or avocado and hummus deviled eggs. So um, the American Institute for Cancer Research has a great recipe for avocado deviled eggs. My mom does a great avocado egg salad. So we just stuff the same thing right in those just um, getting away from the mayonnaise and towards some healthier fats for your heart. All right, so then we have flatbreads. So they're big also. This one was just in the Aldi flyer not that long ago, if anybody shops there, but they use whole wheat, you could use like whole wheat naan, right? 
So that's the bread and then the pumpkin as the topping. And then they had some cheese and then some fresh spinach um, and pumpkin seeds, right? So that would be a fun option. And then there's the grilled cauliflower steak one. So you take a set of bread, you're using um, slices, big slices of cauliflower and topping that and roasting it just like a flatbread. Um, really trendy and fun too. And using different kinds of flavored hummuses. So you know how you can go to the store and there's like a thousand different ones. So you can just take one of those and then top it with whatever you think sounds good on top of that. So guacamole and pineapple flatbread, there's, um, I've seen a great recipe for fig, pear, caramelized onion, just ways to get vegetables and it also looks really pretty. And then, so I just thought these were two really fun options. Sometimes we don't eat enough seafood. So these would be some great seafood appetizer options. So we got sushi poppers. So if any of you make sushi sometimes, um, it's just a little bit fussier sometimes. So this way you just roll it in balls and then you can stuff it with different things. And so that would be a way to get some lean protein um, and also look really pretty too. And then I just had to showcase the one on the bottom too. You know, what they do instead of using um, some of those, uh, usually they're made of white flour crust. They use just um, a small amount of coconut mixed with uh, egg white. And then they put just um, about one tablespoon, which would be about the size of your thumb, um, in a mini muffin tin and you bake it and create a shell out of the coconut and egg. And then they put the shrimp inside there with a sweet chili sauce. And so you could do that and do that ahead and that would be a really fun, fun appetizer. All right, so then I just wanted to talk, you know, it, we're trying to get towards more plant-based meals. So including more things that come from the ground, like the fruits and the vegetables and the beans and the nuts and the seeds, you know, trying to have more of these things on our plate. So these might be a little less mainstream right now, but they're becoming big. And just in case you're interested, these can help you too, you know, um, just a different idea for your board. So these like one is the creamy cashew cheese. So if you haven't heard of that, you can make um, cheese out of cashews. So um, it's a great option and you can make it creamy, like um, you can put it over macaroni and cheese and things like that, or you can make it thicker and make it like a spread. So basically what it is, it's that blended cashews plus nutritional yeast plus seasonings. So now you're like, okay, well, what's nutritional yeast, right? So it's that vegetarian supplement we were talking about that has that like, you know, Cheeto nacho cheese flavor. So that's why it can go really well with that. It's usually that fortified with B12. So it can be really good for you. And then we have like, um, I've actually seen on a board pear grilled, you know, fake cheese sandwiches in cubes. So they do that cashew cheese and then they do it with pear and then they grill it and they, she cut it in cubes and then she put toothpicks on it. So it's just like these little pieces and people love them too. And then savory tempeh bacon. So that's, remember the tempeh we were talking about with the soy. So you can also <laughs> turn that into a lot of different meats. And so making it like pretend bacon would be a really healthier option on that one. Buffalo cauliflower, if you have seen that, you kind of toss the toss cauliflower florets in buffalo sauce and then you coat it. So that's a good one. And then we're getting to the last minutes. I know you guys are like, we haven't even gotten to mocktails, so I'll wrap it up here. But mocktails, I just wanted to show you a couple great options, right? That are non-alcoholic. So things the whole family can love, you know, even with your kids. And I'm aiming for ones without added sugar. So sodas could be easy or things mixed with soda, but I'm going to show you just quickly some great ones that would be lower in the option. I'm going to start with the easiest and the cheapest one, okay? So that is the melted snowman. So you guys get what that is? Does anyone know you wanna type it in the chat box? What would be a melted snowman made of? <laughs> yeah, so coconut milk. So if a snowman melts, it becomes water. So water is just a great drink, um, just everyone can love. And so 
I proposed that as a new name. So that's what we got starting out. You guys are like, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, so you can garnish it. And that's what we're talking about now, right? So sparkling water is a great option. Then you can put a splash of juice and a garnish on there. And one of my coworkers had the idea, you know, you just take those frozen cranberries. They're kind of like ice cubes, right? But they look really good in the glass. Just so sparkling water with a ton of different things work really well. Then you could have the warm mulled cider. So apple cider or juice with cinnamon sticks or orange zest. And then chilled spiced chai tea. And then I don't know, um, growing up, I loved healthier Shirley temples at weddings. That's what I would always get when they had an open bar and, you know, I was too young for anything else. But really, um, grenadine, which is in the Shirley Temple, is usually made up of pomegranate juice. So you could take pomegranate um, or just plain carbonated water, like seltzer, add some cherry juice, and then a small amount of stevia or sugar and some fresh cherries, and you get a healthier Shirley Temple. And then some other ideas would be the eggnog smoothies. So you could serve these in little glasses, like maybe even little shot glasses, but it's just taking a banana, plain yogurt, vanilla, few almonds, dash of nutmeg and blending that low fat hot chocolate, mimosa. So that would be the sparkling, take either apple juice or white grape juice. And then you mix that with orange juice, kombucha. So you might've heard of that. It's a fermented lightly effervescent drink from tea ginger or turmeric hot tea, which are both very good for you. And that would help with digestion while you're drinking it and enjoying it. And then a hot pumpkin drink. So this one um, is done by the Iowa State Extension. And so what they do is they take that non-fat milk, fill it with a little bit of pumpkin puree, and then a dash of pumpkin syrup and vanilla and blend that and heat that. That would be a more, you know, seasonal and just kind of fun spin on the hot chocolate. And just a couple other options. So I was at a seafood um, conference virtually. And so they had a virtual networking session. So they sent out these recipes that you could have alcoholic or not. And they invited people to cook them at home or make them at home and then come to their online networking session. So what this one is, and it's called the Blue Crush. So really all it is, is then it's taking it's that grapefruit juice plus carbonated water. So neither of those, you know, the carbonated water doesn't have any calories or sugar. So that's what you want to look for there. And then you want to look for the 100% grapefruit juice. So you know, it's all coming from fruit. Then they put in a handful of blueberries, squeeze of lime juice and crushed ice. So that's their blue crush. And then this is the other one that they had at that science um, symposium in September. It was the shrimp wreck. So it's kind of your take on a Bloody Mary, right? So just some, another good options. And you're getting a vegetable with that tomato juice. So kind of fun there. And then here's a homemade one just right from us. Ann and I did this, but just mojito water, right? People really like it. You just muddle some mint leaves to help release their flavor and then some sliced limes and then you're chopping it in there and letting the flavors release and you can enjoy that. So that's what I have for you today. That's it. Um, happy holidays to all of you and thanks for listening to the last one. I have that short evaluation following this and I'll send that out. And for those of you who kindly um, donated some money for the programming, then I'm going to send out that infographic. So you'll be able to look for that in your mail. Let me think if there's anything, does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns?